So what we now need is once we've released the ball, we need a way to tell Phaser that we want the collision detection to detect when this has hit a brick or when this has hit the paddle so it can rebounce upwards. So the first thing that we want to do, uh, we know that over in our game, we have an update method. So let's come down to this update method. This is checking if the paddle is on the ball initially so we can go ahead and replace it. Down here though, we're gonna go ahead and set a collision for our ball and our paddle and our ball and our bricks. So to do this, we say this game, physics, we say arcade, because we're using arcade style within phaser, and we say collide. Now this takes a few arguments. The first one is gonna be what you are looking to uh, check in terms of what you want to collide. Then we have what we want it to collide with, which is gonna be the paddle. Then we have a method that we can call once this has happened, which is really important because when the ball hits the paddle, we need to do something with it. So we're gonna say ball hit paddle. And I'm gonna go ahead and implement that method down here just now. So ball hit paddle, this will be the handler when that hits. So I'm gonna say in here, hit paddle, just so we can see that working. Uh, we then have another argument. I'm not actually too sure what this is. I've just got used to typing null in there. Uh, but then we refer to the overall gain. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and click, wait for the ball to get to the point where it hits the paddle. And you can see that that automatically bounces off because we've added collision between the ball and the paddle. And of course we see hit paddle. Now, once the ball does hit the paddle, that's a little bit more complicated. Let's add the collision with the bricks first of all, and then we'll come back to this in just a second. So we pretty much want to do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste this down here. And we're going to go ahead and say that we want the ball to collide with the bricks. And of course, we're going to say ball hit brick because it's only going to ever hit one brick at a time. We can copy this method down, handle what happens when we hit a brick, which of course is to kill that brick, which we're going to be looking at later. And of course, we're going to say hit brick. So if we just give this a refresh and click, you notice that that is now colliding off of each of them bricks. And if you take a look on the right, you can see each of them console uh, logs being shown. So uh, let's, I'm just trying to get that in the middle. There we go. So you can see that working uh, really nicely. Okay, so now that we've got this working, we need to figure out what's going to happen when we hit the paddle. This is the most complicated part of this. And what I did is I took the logic for this from one of the examples over on Phaser. So if I don't explain this entirely correctly, I apologize. Uh, but essentially what we want to happen, I can explain what we want to happen. If you have a look now, when I go ahead and release this, uh, let's go ahead and release it so it comes straight back down to the paddle. If it's on the corner, it's not really uh, pushing this over to the left. So what you'd expect to happen is the further over on the left that it hits the paddle, the more it pushes on the left. So we uh, decrease the velocity on the left and the same for the right as well. So essentially what we're doing here is saying, is the ball on the left hand side of the paddle? If it is, decrease the velocity on the X axis. If it's on the right hand side of the paddle that it eventually comes down to hit, increase the velocity on the y on the x axis but increase it so you can see here at the moment it just doesn't look like it's working very well so to do this let's go ahead and create a difference in here of zero we'll see what this does in a minute let's uh, focus on the left hand side first of all so if the ball x axis is less than the paddle x axis which essentially means it's on the left hand side of the paddle we're going to set the difference here to paddle x minus ball x that's just going to give us an idea of how much difference it is between the center and the left of the paddle so the further over on the left of the paddle it hits the more we increase the velocity now then we say ball body velocity which we've already seen because we originally set that when it left the paddle and on the x-axis, we're going to set this to minus 10 multiplied by that difference. So remember, the further away from the center it is, the more we're going to increase the velocity or decrease the velocity on the x-axis. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and see what this does. I'm going to release the ball. So it goes ahead and comes straight back down to me. So it might take a couple of goes. When I hit right on the edge, uh, it looks like the ball is not defined. Okay, so the reason for this is what we're doing is inside of here, we're expecting in the ball and the paddle uh, that we have uh, defined inside of here. So that's uh, the reason that that didn't work. So let's go ahead and run this again. And you'll see that when I hit this right on the corner, it goes ahead and really decreases the velocity on the x-axis. And if it's slightly in the middle, it just doesn't do it as much. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. Now, if uh, we go ahead and release the ball again, and 
so it comes back down to us on the uh, right hand side of the paddle it's just kind of bouncing in the same uh, direction using the same velocity so what we want to do is say if the ball x-axis is greater than the paddle x-axis that means it's on the right hand side the difference is now going to be the ball x-axis minus the paddle x-axis so we're pretty much just reversing this and instead of minus 10 we want to increase the velocity on the x-axis so we multiply it by the difference uh, that we're using here which of course is the further away it is from the center now really importantly what we want to do is in each of these statements go ahead and return so we don't go ahead and continue down to here uh, and if we give this a refresh now what we pretty much end up with is the ability to really go ahead and push this depending on where we are and of course if this is right in the center it's just going to bounce straight up because we're checking on the left and on the right and side. So that's pretty much it for the collision detection on the paddle. But what happens when a ball hits a brick? Well, let's just look at a really quick way of going ahead and killing them bricks when a ball hits a brick. Now we know that we get as part of that group, lots of different bricks. So the group itself isn't being hit. Each of the items inside of that group are being hit. When we go ahead and hit a single brick, what we're going to get is into here, the ball and the brick, because we know that when we're defining out the collision here, we're saying this ball and this bricks. So let's come down. This is gonna be the individual brick that is gonna be hit. And what we can do is say brick kill. And that is as easy as it gets. That's gonna go ahead and remove that particular brick from that group. So now I can go ahead and click, and this is just going ahead and getting rid of each of the bricks that we collide with. Let's try and get this in the center of one of these so we can see that work really nicely. There we go. Okay, so that is pretty much it. We're gonna leave it at that for now. We've looked at collision detection. We still have a little bit of work to do, but we're gonna move on to the next part where when we do hit bricks, we're gonna update the score just up here so we can keep track of that.